All right, in this video, we're gonna continue working on the motor, and then um, I've got some parts to unbox for you. Let's get going. All right, things look pretty clean inside here in the timing area. The lower two bolts are pretty sludgy, but I'm beginning to think now that it was because of the oil pan, which does show signs of leakage. I'm just not feeling that uh, on Honda Bond job. I just don't think it's a very good job. So I'll have to be redoing that anyway because I'm getting a new oil pan. So new water pumps going in, new tensioners. So that's where the tensioner is, those two bolts there. Um, this is what it looks like. The automatic tensioner right there. That's going to be replaced with a manual tensioner um, because like I could just pull literally I pulled off the balance shaft with my hands and I pulled off the um, timing belt almost just with my hands. So that's an uh, issue obviously um, that people commonly refer to and so that'll be going and um, so an all new timing belt parts and tensioner parts and water pump parts on this side. There is such a thing as too much of a good thing. That is way too much Honda Bond. And it clearly failed on this side. I mean, look. It's going right through there. Ah, oh, brother. All right, now that the engine's as bare as it's gonna be, time to show you guys some parts. All right, I got quite a few parts here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what's uh, come through the mail. First, what's in this bag isn't really new, but it's kind of nice that's going on the car. AEM fuel rail. It's going on this car with those RDX injectors. And that's just a basic AEM fuel pressure regulator and just a fuel pressure gauge. My Bosch um, wideband O2 sensor. And then let's check out what's in Lucky Box number one. Yes, VTEC sub harness. So um, I'll really only need one of these plugs, the VTEC solenoid plug. I'm not going to use the pressure switch or the knock sensor. So um, that's another really important part that'll allow me to run the VTEC. So I'll have to pin that into the ECU connector and uh, tell Honda to run VTEC. This little bag, manual tensioner. So super stoked to have that. So we got some ignition stuffs. Boom. NGK Iridium 9s. That's the kind I had on the previous motor and I loved them. I know it's a junky box, but NGK Blues, baby. This is the set for the CB7, the F22. It's got the coil wire, so that one's good to go for uh, an external coil. If this is any indicator, boom! Timing belt and water pump kit from Gates. I won't be using this belt because it's balance shaft. Don't need that. Won't be. Other than that, got the water pump, the tensioner, all that good stuff. I won't be using the automatic tensioner for obvious reasons. So here's an interesting part I need to swap over. This is a um, timing bracket on the timing side. And uh, what it does is it replaces this one uh, right here because that one is totally going to give my motor some pitch. You can see the difference in how it's laid out. Last, but certainly not least, for right now anyway boom baby ati super damper but dude oh my god it's a beauty oh i'm so stoked let me get out of the bag oh look at that oh that's gorgeous i couldn't get one for the h23 that didn't have the power steering ribs but that's okay you never know Well, the injectors sit in there pretty nicely, but these studs are like way too short. I mean, look at, they don't even, they barely even go inside the holes. So the studs I was working with must have been way longer than these, the ones that are on my friend's CB7 now. 
The one thing I'm going to do right now before I do anything else, I replace these two studs right here. So what you do to transfer over your oil presser switch, which used to be up here on the F22, is um, you take out the two pieces of the H23 or H22 oil presser switch, and you take you separate this part, um, which is a totally different style. It's a ring and screw type, and this is just a male plug type on the F22. And you you put that in, and then you twist the both back on like this. And you might have to extend your wire on your F22 harness to reach that. So this is what I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab, this is a really nice one, the cover, because I'm getting a lot of leaves and crap inside there, and I really don't want to, and this is a really nice cover, so I'm gonna grab this. Also, these little guys right here, you can pull these out and get a better seal. Look what I also found, people, Prelude SI. Oh yes, there's my intake manifold, plenum that I need. Yes. So here's a lovely little tidbit I found. If you get yourself a PCB plenum, like I have over there, you have to realize that the studs in your runners are too short for a P13 plenum. The, um, the holes on either side are actually taller than on the PCB plenum over there. And so the studs will barely stick out the top like a sixteenth of an inch. And uh, that's not gonna cut it. You need to have all five. So you've gotta remove these studs and go get some bolts that are the right size or um, P13 plenum studs. back but I'm worried when I get to the prelude it's gonna be gutted or moved so yes just like I left it okay so check this out you see the differences here it's got a it's got a throttle um, control idle control on it I need that TPS and there's those studs I need one of them is really rusty Sweet, it's ready to go. Everything's on. Got the coolant lines hooked up. The rest of them go to the thermostat over here. These guys right here. And um, just waiting on the Golden Eagle um, thermal gasket, which helps disconnect thermally the intake manifold from the head. All right, time to move on to timing. Gonna replace that seal right there. Gonna put the retainer on and start bolting things up. Let's go. gaskets here let's check it out all right sweet see a little thinner actually than the Honda version the busy moto place I got it from was quite a bit thicker it didn't have a lot of stud length left for the nuts but um, yeah I like the look of this thing this is great and it's on there's the gasket sticking out 
All right, let's move on to bigger and better things. Now I got the motor rotated around because my Moroso pan is coming soon and I have to get all this Honda Bond off of here. And it's funny, it was leaking the worst right here where there's so much of it. So all that has to be scraped off. I'm gonna use a scrubby to start to get as much off as I can without hurting the aluminum on the block um, and carefully use a nice sharp flathead to remove the rest. <laughs> So that's what we're looking for there. It's not perfect by any means, but the smoother the mating surface, the better. Next, let's put the Moroso oil pan on. What do we have here in lucky box number? Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Look at that beauty. Oh my gosh gorgeous and if you look closely you see those divots that means it needs a gasket which I am way more comfortable with than Honda Bond I know there's people out there that swear by Honda Bond but man this is way less stressful to apply so I brought up my f22 oil pan to compare and they are identical as far as the mounting surface so uh, just for you f22 guys out there if you want a baffled pan this will work for your cars too. Oh baby, more parts. The Torco RTF. Almost two quarts goes in the transmission. And of course, you know what's in here. Look at that piece. Sorry about the lighting. Ultra quiet resonator. Now I hear that they're a little short, but they're definitely wide enough. Two and a half inch in and out, of course. And then it came with this other box. I literally don't know what's in here. I did order a bunch of stuff, but... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. PLM tri -Y. Dude, that is beautiful. <laughs> Sweet, no more covers on top of the motor. So I torqued these down in two steps, six pounds and then 10 pounds in like a star pattern. So I did that one, then 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 that one, going around in a zigzag pattern. Um, it's been a while since I've done gaskets, but the bowing from the dimples is a little disconcerting, but that's what they're supposed to do, I'm told. So, um, uh, you know, let me know, obviously. This is too tight. Um, this one's the first one that got me. But I mean, it's easily fixable. But man, look at this pan, it's great. Got something else super important today. Glad to see it was well packaged. It is my distributor. Yes, TD61U. That's exactly what I needed. External coil, distributor for H Motors, OBD1. Took the cap off, found a little corrosion, tried to clean it up, and uh, everything looks good and OE in the actual distributor, so that's great too. So this can go on. All right, got the distributor all hooked up. Um, the firing order, distributor one, three, four, two. And that's what the cylinders, one, two, three, four. That's how these distributors work. I had to move my coil, you know, rotate the bracket a little bit so that this coil wire would reach just hoping this coil wire reaches it should because it's from the firewall and uh, so that's hooked up one more thing to do I've got to switch out the alternator because I just realized that this plug is for OBD2 only it works with the H23 harness but not my harness so here we've got uh, ATI's damper puller installer kit um, to put the damper on because it doesn't just slide on so it has a couple parts in it that I need, including the largest one of these, double-threaded 
uh, studs right here. Um, this one goes in where the crank pulley bolt has the same thread pattern as the crank pulley bolt does. So that gets twisted on. Then you put the damper on and then you put this inside of this which will press on the damper onto this. And um, that's how you have to get these on. Then you need a 27 millimeter wrench for the big uh, nut and you need a um, 19 millimeter for the end of the bolt. You gotta hold that in place while you tighten this down and it eventually will bottom out. And it bottomed out just now. So then we take this off. There we go. We'll see if the inner adapter came with it. No, it did not. So I got to go in there with a 19 millimeter and get the adapter out. And it actually came off pretty easily. There it is, right there. ATI is on. That is not coming off. <sighs> that's a lot of parts just to put it on. Well, all right, that's gonna be it for this video. That was a lot of stuff, I know. Thanks for sticking through it. Um, next video, we're gonna be taking the motor, putting it, on the ground, gonna bolt the transmission up, flywheel clutch, all that good stuff, and torque down the ATI super damper, prep the engine bay for the motor, got a little bit of cleaning to do, make sure everything's good on the wiring harness, and then put that motor in, and get it all hooked up and get it started. I'm more than ready. This is a lot of work, and I'm getting tired of having all of it to do still, so gonna work real hard to get it done, and get that video out for you guys. Stay tuned, this is Falconator, signing out. <laughs>